Hi everybody, it's Curious Raven with another true crime. This one is about a little girl named Victoria Martins. She has been brutally murdered by her mother, her mother's boyfriend, and the boyfriend's cousin. Pure discretion is advised. Victoria was a 10 year old little girl on august 24th 2016 was when she passed away she was born august 23rd 2006 so she passed away on her birthday her 10th birthday a 911 call came through from one of victoria's mother's neighbors in the apartment complex and you can actually hear Victoria's mother, the neighbor said, who's in the apartment, talking to the 911 dispatcher, and how old is she? And uh, the mom said, my daughter, and she's 10 years old. 911 was called because there was smoke coming out from underneath the apartment door. When 911 got there, when they went in, they found a blanket on fire in one of the bedrooms. Unfortunately, they found Victoria, well, her body parts, in a bag, and they were trying to light it on fire to get rid of the evidence, I'm guessing. There's not a lot of backstory on this case. This case is kind of straight to the point, but when I was listening to it and I read about it, it was, disg it was, it was, it really bothered me. Just disgusting. The perpetrators are Victoria's mom, Michelle Martins, her boyfriend, Fabian Gonzalez, and Gonzalez's cousin, Jessica Kelly. They were actually arrested at the scene and charged with first degree murder, child abuse resulting in the bodily harm or death kidnapping, tampering with evidence, and contributing to the delinquency of a minor. Um, Jessica Kelly just got out of prison. She wasn't even out of prison for four days. And she was actually in prison for rape and assault. The two, Fabian and Jessica, actually pleaded not guilty. And her mom, Michelle, pleaded guilty. There was a witnesses that saw Jessica carrying Victoria to the apartment around 10 p.m. on August 23rd. Later that night, neighbors reported hearing screaming coming from the apartment shortly after at around 4.30 a.m. On August 24th, Michelle and Fabian left, left the apartment and reported to neighbors that Kelly had attacked them with an iron. Um, she, you know, as then they pronounced her dead. And with the autopsy, it showed that she was sexually assaulted, strangled to death, and then stabbed and dis dismembered. Her body was then set on fire. Supposedly, Martin's Michelle said that she gave her daughter alcohol and meth prior to her death in order to calm her down so Fabian and Jessica could have sex with her. See, this is the whole thing about this case, is that her mom is a, mo a fucking monster. Supposedly, she has been going online, like dating sites, and practically pimping her kids out. And she has a little boy. Thank God that little boy was not there that night. He was actually with his father. She literally told them that she would seek men online to engage in sexual acts with her two children, including Victoria, while she allegedly watched for pleasure. Her mom, her own mother that birthed her, wanted to watch for pleasure. Isn't that the most heinous, disgusting thing? It makes me want to throw up to think about it, to be honest. To know this little girl was only 10 years old. And these three people, something was going on. They said that Michelle met Fabian on Plenty of Fish. And then Fabian invited his cousin over, Jessica. 
the three suspects were held on one million cash only bonds. Martin, all three of them were arraigned on September 16th, 2016. They all were tried separately. On August 14th, 2017, almost a year later, the judge decided that Michelle Martins would be tried first on July 30th, 2018. Gonzalez would be second in October 2018, and then Kelly would go on trial in January 2019. On June 29, 2018, Michelle Martins accepted a plea bargain to one count of child abuse resulting in death. There was a huge investigation because, first off, when they did the autopsy, they did not find no meth in Victoria's system. So that means the mom lied. So they started kind of looking at her testimony and as a lie. Like, what else did she lie about? So they had to do this huge, long investigation, and they discredited a lot of the things that she said. What actually came up, the, the news story, was that Michelle and Fabian were not in the apartment at the time. They left Victoria in the care of Jessica Kelly. And Jessica Kelly supposedly killed Victoria, raped and killed Victoria. When Fabian got back, when they got back to the apartment, they had to. He dismembered Victoria's body. And the investigator said what was gross was when they went to the house, there were like dozens of bags all over the apartment with Victoria's body parts in them. So they weren't in just one area. This is the timeline that the Albuquerque Police Department announced was at 4.25 p.m., Victoria Martins get off the bus and goes home. Michelle and Fabian aren't present at this time. 5.07 p.m., Michelle and Fabian return to the apartment. 6.05 p.m., Victoria goes to gas station with Fabian. 6.15 to 6.20, Victoria and Fabian return to the apartment. 6.30, Michelle and Fabian leave to go to Paradise Hills. 7.02 p.m., Michelle and Fabian return to the apartment. 7.05 p.m., Victoria is seen alive by neighbors. 7.06 p.m., Michelle and Fabian leave again. 7.38 p.m., Michelle and Fabian are near Rio Bravo Boulevard and Coors Boulevard. Now, I'm just going to pop this in here. They actually went through the pings, Michelle's, on her cell phone. So they knew where they were to kind of make a timeline of what they were doing. 7.59 p.m., Michelle and Fabian are seen near Five Points and Bridge Boulevard. At 8.47 p.m., Michelle and Fabian arrive at the apartment. At 8.48 p.m., eyewitnesses saw Victoria's body as being seen carried outside the apartment. See, it's just, it's like all these eyewitnesses, you know, one eyewitness says, oh, at 10 p.m., they saw someone carrying her out of the apartment or to the apartment, and then now eyewitness is saying, I feel like it's a mess. Um, the lead investigator said it proves Martins and Gonzalez was not present when the murder and rape occurred. So, like I said, she was left at the apartment with Jessica. And the mom and her boyfriend weren't even present when it happened. Now, Fabian did dismember Victoria, so he is being charged with that. Michelle Martins is believed to have falsely confessed to actively participating in the murder. Martins will face 12 to 15 years in prison. What Michelle said was that she saw her daughter. First, they drugged her to make her more willing. And then, supposedly, she saw them rape and strangle and kill her daughter. That's what she said she saw. But that wasn't true because she wasn't even there. They finally got the answer. Um, what Jessica Kelly said that happened... It's a whole bunch of crock of shit to me. She said that some un... While Michelle and Fabian were gone, and she was watching little Victoria, 
She said that an unknown man came in the apartment, killed Victoria, and then left the apartment. What kind of crap is that? Really? Oh yeah, I forgot to put in too. All this happened in Albuquerque, New Mexico. So this girl's outright lying. Like, what? I mean, she's the one that raped and killed her. But, okay, um, they found DNA from a male. It was a partial DNA, but a DNA, and it did not match Fabian. So this is still a mystery of whose DNA was this on the child's back. That's where they found it, on her back. It did come into light that the CYFD is kind of like CPS. Every different, every state has a different name for it. But it's like Child Protective Service. Well, they're... In the, in, you know, in the future before this happened, there were a couple investigations that supposedly they did because they knew something was going on with Victoria and her being abused and probably molested. Um, one of those before, right before this happened, was that it was, someone called them and said that Victoria was being kissed by an older man, and there was more than one occasion where the police knew that there were reports about this. Well, in January 2017, two police spokespersons told the Albuquerque Journal the officers did investigate the referrals and stated that the interviews with Victoria Martins and her mother have been conducted. And guess what? In July 2017, the Civilian Police Oversight Agency actually found out that that was a lie. They never started any investigations to look into the reports about abuse that Victoria was going through. So this was a big disappointment and big ball drop on the police department. They might have had time to intervene in her death. Isn't that so sad? The chief police, Gordon Eden, described the murder as the most gruesome act of evil I have ever seen in my career. The governor said we are heartbreaking as we mourn the murder of beautiful 10-year-old Victoria Martins. Give your kids an extra hug tonight. A birthday memorial was held for Victoria on August 29th, 2016. In August 2017, Victoria Martin's maternal grandparents filed a wrongful death lawsuit in the second district court against the city of Albuquerque and some of its police officers. The lawsuit alleged that their failure to investigate a report that one of Michelle Martin's boyfriends tried to kiss Victoria was a negligence that led to her murder. You know, the good old police department, they denied that. The lawsuit seeks policy changes and compensation for the Martins family. So let's get back to Gonzalez, who is charged with dismembering Victoria Martins. Now, this community was outraged because Gonzalez, Fabian Mag Gonzalez, <laughs> is due to be freed once the court determines the terms of his release including where he will be allowed to stay. And this judge didn't even want to put a GPS tracker on him. There were people in the streets with protest signs yelling, don't free this murderer. They wanted justice for a little Victoria. And I don't blame them. This was horrible. Prosecutors had tried to keep him locked up, arguing that his DNA was found on items used to clean up the crime scene. But guess what? Gonzalez's attorneys insisted he posed no threat to the community. Really? Even if he did not kill this little girl or not, is not in his right mind. He could actually take this little girl's body and chop it up and then clean up the crime scene. What the fuck? A normal person would be freaked the fuck out and throwing up and not being able to do it and refusing to do it and... There's something fucking wrong with him. Sorry, y'all. I'm feeling in the moment of being emotional with this one. And to know that 
this little girl had to go through men coming to their apartment and raping her and molesting her. God knows for how long, how many years that this horrible, worthless piece of crap mother could do that to their own flesh and blood. Sorry guys, gotta cut this short. My husband has been out of town for two weeks for work and he just got home, so I'm gonna go spend some time with him. And just remember to keep your kids close and know that there are horrible people out there. Please go like and subscribe to my channel and you'll find links to my merch store, my Patreon, and all of my socials down below. Remember, stay tuned for next Friday for another true crime video. Also, you can comment down below if you would like me to go over any murder that you have heard of or mystery, and I will. So, just let me know. Alright, until then, remember, it's scary out there.